Hey guys, we're going to be working on the register mutation today. Now before we actually go in and fill in the logic for register, we need to make sure our database looks like how it should. So we have not basically changed the tables so they match what our entity looks like over here. And now I mentioned something about type ORM and it's synchronizing it. If we look at our ORM config, we have synchronized turned on to true. Um, and what that means is Typeform is going to automatically um, change the database so it looks like um, our, what our entity looks like. But what I want to do is show you how you can see what your database looks like now and then how we're going to change it and you can see the difference afterwards. So I like to use this on the command line, but you can do this. There's uh, multiple GUIs you can install uh, that allow you to access and see Postgres. But if we type psql here, um, I now have this little prompt and this basically gives me access to Postgres. So if I come over here to ORM config, I, I, I have this database and this is the name of it. And I noticed I just misspelled it, but that's okay. If I do backslash C, this is um, for connecting to it. And I put too many. Um, I'm now connected to this database. And if I do backslash D, it'll describe all the tables that my database has. So you'll notice it has a, a user and a user ID sequence. Um, this ID, this user ID sequence is for creating IDs. Um, you don't have to worry about that. But if we do backslash D on user, we can actually see um, it has an ID, first name, last name, and age. And these are basically the columns and stuff that it used to be in the database um, before uh, basically the initial boilerplate type form had. And if I want to, I could select the columns from this table. So select all from user. But we're going to see it doesn't give us what we'd expect. Um, ID, first name, last name, age, right? When we select from this table, it gives us the current user is me. So what's going on with that? Well, user actually is um, a table. There's multiple tables called user. Um, what it thinks it wants is to get like Postgres users um, and not the users for this table. So we're having like a naming conflict and we can get around that. But the easiest thing I like to do is just name my table something different. So if I go into entity over here, I can actually change the name of my table and I'm just going to call it users. So now when we synchronize this, we should see these columns, email and password. And then we should also see this table called users instead of just user. All right, so how do we synchronize? Well, what we're going to do is in our index.typescript, we are going to create a connection. And this is coming from not net, but from, oops, from type one. And you can pass like all your information of how to connect in here. Like we could say um, our username and whatnot, but we already have our ORM config. So it's going to read from there, all the configuration things. And we're going to say dot then because this is an asynchronous um, function and it's going to give us a connection. So with this connection, we can run migrations and whatnot, but we're going to worry about that later. For now, we can just like ignore that as if it was there. So after we create a connection, we're going to start a server. So this is how we're going to um, basically connect to the database. And whenever type ORM connects to the database, it's going to synchronize it for us because we set it to do that in uh, ORM config right here. So now if I do yarn start to just uh, start up my server, it's going to go ahead and synchronize the tables um, as well. And we can see that. Um, okay, we have some problems and that's in our resolvers. So email and password are not being used. So it doesn't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and say const we're going to return email plus password just so we use these variables. Okay, so we're restarting and we cannot open uh, schema.graphql. And let's check out our index. And I think I just need to do maybe a dot slash here. Uh, this has uh, problems. This has to do with like relative pathing in TypeScript. 
I can't remember what I did to get this working. Um, let me check a project. I'll be right back. Okay, so I looked up what we need to do. And uh, so the problem was with TypeScript and for whatever reason, the path gets messed up. So we have to use the path module. So we're gonna import um, path from path. And this is a module coming just from node. And we need to import it like this, I believe. And we're just gonna say path.join and we're gonna pass in our directory name. So I think we just need to do absolute pathing, which that should go ahead and do for us. Um, and this will fix the problem where it's unable to find the schema. It's not that the schema is not there, it's just having trouble with TypeScript. Okay, so we now see server is running on localhost 4000, so perfect. Um, so it, I think it should have ran and updated stuff. Now, we have logging false. I like to turn this on, so I'm gonna turn this to true. And we'll actually see some stuff of, all right, look at all this junk. Um, this is what Typeworm runs, and you can kind of see all the SQL that it runs. So you can turn that on and off in the uh, Orm config. All right, so let's check out our new database. So here I'm just gonna go into psql, and I'm just gonna run the command I had up here. And I'm gonna describe, so now we have a uh, users, user and user ID sequence. So we do have a new table. So let's first look at users. Um, and this looks perfect. This looks exactly like our entity um, should be. Uh, it's called users. We have an ID, which is a UUID, emails, varchar, and uh, password is text. Uh, we, we noticed that uh, user is still a thing though. Um, it didn't get rid of that. So that's something I guess we're gonna have to clean up uh, ourselves if we want to. But uh, I think we're gonna be doing lots of different changes um, to this. So uh, we'll be cleaning this up in a future video because it's very easy with uh, migrations. So when we do migrations, we'll also clean up like these extra tables we've left behind. But okay, so we have our database table in order. Now we can actually create stuff. So in our resolver over here, we're gonna actually put the logic for registering a user. So first things first is I want to take this password and hash it because I don't wanna store the password as just text in the database because if we get hacked, then everyone knows, well, at least the hacker knows everyone's password, which is not good. So to hash this, we're gonna be using a bcrypt and we're gonna be using the JavaScript version because this seems to just install and run better on everyone's computer. So we're just going to copy this and then we're gonna be doing the async version. So if we come over here, we can see the different ways of how we can use this. Um, we're gonna be checking the password when we log in, but we're currently just needing to um, hash it so we're gonna be using bcrypt.hash. This is the async version. We can either use a callback like this with a function, or it'll return a promise um, if we don't pass a callback. And so we're gonna use the promise and use async and await. And uh, it'll go ahead and hash it for us. So to make this function asynchronous, I just say async in front of it. And now I can basically await any asynchronous code. So I'm gonna say const hashed password is going to be await, and I'm going to uh, import bcrypt. And now you'll notice we have a little red line and it's the usual. We've just installed a JavaScript library. We're gonna to have to install the type for it. So yarn add at type slash bcrypt. JS, and then dash D at the end for uh, dev dependency. All right, so, and it looks like it doesn't have a default import, so let's just add the star. Cool, so now I'm gonna do bcrypt.hash, and uh, the first thing is the thing I wanna hash, which is the password. Second thing is the salt, and uh, from what I heard, I think you want this 10 or greater, so we'll put it at 10. 
and uh, that's enough. We will now get the hash password here. We're, this is asynchronous, but we're awaiting it, so that means um, we're going to wait until it's done. And then when it's done, what we want to do is just create our user. So we're going to uh, grab our entity. So if I just type user, I can auto import it. So we're getting this user from entity user. And I'm going to say create. And now I'm going to pass in um, basically the things I need to create it, which is the email and the password, which is going to be the hashed password. And then here at the end, we're just going to return true. Now the other thing is this is also asynchronous, or at least it returns a promise. So I'm going to wait this until it's finished. And now we can also uh, grab the return value of this, which should be a user. But we're not actually doing anything with the user right now, so we don't have to worry about that. OK, so I'm going to save this. And I'm going to start up my server. Oops. And the next thing I'm going to do is go over to the GraphQL Playground and uh, try this out. So we're going to go localhost 4000. So here we can try all our GraphQL queries. And the one we want to try out is that register command that we just did. And uh, I'm going to create a new tab here. I want to connect to my database and show you guys we currently have no users. So select all from users, and we can see the ID, email, password, there's nothing, zero rows. Um, but when I run a register mutation, email is going to be bob.com, and password is going to be bob. All right, let's run this. We get registration was true. If I come over here, I select, we have still no users. So this is odd. Let's come back over here and see if something um, crashed or whatnot. And it doesn't. It looked like it just like straight did not. Uh, oh, I'll tell you why. Uh, I forgot that's how type orm works. So this does not actually create the user in the database. Um, so I make this mistake all the time. Um, I'm coming from SQLize, which when you run create, it actually runs it. Uh, it basically just creates an object which then you can do stuff with, but it is not in the database. And I actually think, does this even return a promise? It does not return a promise. And the way I knew this didn't return a promise is I just hovered over here and I see this colon here. It says it returns a user and not a promise. So after that, to actually save this in the database, I have to call save like this. And if I hover, we can see this does return a promise. So I can just await that. Okay, so we're gonna try this again. Um, I don't have to restart my server because we already have it automatically restarting. But now we are creating the user and then we are actually saving in the database. So no database calls are made until we get here. And that's verified as you can look at over here all the code that's getting run and no SQL was run. Okay, let's hop back over here and we'll run this select query after we register this guy again. All right, so we're just gonna run the exact same mutation and we get true. And we select all, and now we can see Bob, we can see the UUID added. Then we can also see here's the hashed password. So perfect. So it was successfully added. So yeah, don't forget to actually save it when you're doing things um, in type form. But that is it for this video, guys. We are now able to create users. Now, we're not quite done with register, so there's some things I want to add. Uh, off the top of my head, there's three things I can think of. First, I want to send confirmation emails. So when we create a user, it should send them an email and it'd be like, hey, do you exist? Is this is a legitimate email. Um, secondly, we should be able to handle um, duplicate emails. So right now, you'll notice I, I gave no constraints on this being unique or whatnot, which is going to cause a problem. So we're going to fix that um, because we should have unique emails um, across uh, like I shouldn't be able to create Bob at Bob.com twice and then lastly um, right now to test this I just went over to GraphQL Playground uh, but what I want to do instead is set up Jest and so we can just automatically test this and I think that's what we're gonna do in the next video is set that up so we can actually test the mutation and see the value getting in the database 
do it that way. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.